Hi, this is Gary Beadle of uh, BSRT. I'm the designer and manufacturer of the BSRT G3 car. Uh, that's what we have here in front of me. Um, I just thought I would share uh, some information on basically taking the car apart, uh, breaking it down into its individual pieces, and uh, hopefully this will be uh, some help to some of the HL racers out there that are interested in working and running the G3 car. So the car that we have here in front of us is, uh, is a BSRT, what we call 902 car. Uh, this is in its formula format, so we call this a Formula 902 car. It has, uh, utilizes the long wheelbase on the G3 car, and it also uses uh, a Tomy snap-on formula body, of which there's uh, plenty to pick from out there, and so it's a very popular class, catching on a lot more every day. So what I'm going to do at this point then is we're going to kind of go through this step by step as far as disassembling the car into kind of its basic items that uh, make up the car. So the, the body is um, uh, injection molded plastic. Uh, it can be remo removed quite easily. Uh, the easiest way is to just get your thumbnail underneath the body while you hold the chassis and just pop it out and it just comes right off. And as you can see on the body, there's a couple indentations here that are mold, molded into the body. And those in turn are what slide into uh, the holes that are into the, in the G3 chassis itself. Um, the next step we're going to do um, uh, is to actually just snap out the rear axle assembly. It's all one piece. It, it uh, has a lead in in the back. And as you'll see here, it snaps out quite easily. Uh, you can press both rear tires at the same time if you like, or you can pop one side at a time. It kind of pops right out of position, and it's out. Um, so that's quite easy. Um, the next step uh, in disassembling the car is to take off what we call the traction magnet clip. So uh, these two magnets right here, uh, which you can see by the armature that's sitting right here, which is the motor that runs the car, uh, these two motor magnets uh, power the motor assembly itself and there's an additional pair of magnets on the car which we call traction magnets which are these two back here and typically if you're going to disassemble the car uh, that's the next step you would take now this clip right here is an ejection molded piece of plastic that that snaps onto the chassis and then holds those traction magnets in place so the easiest way to take it apart is to grab it again just like you did with the body thumbnail, screwdriver, whatever you like to use, is you just basically pull it out just a short distance, which then gets it off the chassis, and then you merely have to lift it around the other side and it comes right off. So now, the next step then, the traction magnets actually slide into a pocket that's on the side of the chassis. So the traction magnets are, again, very easy to take out. Uh, just, you can grab it with a couple fingers and they'll just slide right out. And then you can see where the indentation in the chassis is. You can see the, the traction magnet is uh, it's actually a compression molded traction magnet. It has indentations which then uh, will guide it and locate it right in the chassis. So there's one, we're going to grab the other one. You can see they're quite strong magnets. Okay, now the next step we're going to do is we're going to eventually want to take the motor assembly out of the car um, which, you, which I could do at this point, but sometimes it's easier, since we're going to disassemble the entire car, uh, sometimes it's easier to take the pickup shoes off first. The pickup shoes are these copper pieces right here. They're actually the contact point with the track where it picks up electricity off of the track. So the track itself, you have the two steel rails. Uh, these pickup shoes are designed to run on those steel rails, pick up electricity, and thereby with the controller that you're using on the track, you can uh, pull the trigger down further to give more voltage to the car, which of course speeds it up and then you're in control of the car around the track. So the pickup shoes, um, they actually hook into what we call these little pickup holders, which are right here. And the way to remove them is to, you, as you can see, there's a tab here, uh, injection, um, injection molded tab that's on the chassis itself. And you merely have to uh, push the pickup shoe down just a little bit, pry the front back just a little bit, and it'll, so it's off the tab. And there, basically, it's off the car. Just rotate it back out of the hook, and there's the first side. 
Now you gotta watch those springs because those springs will get away from you pretty easily. So what I'm actually going to do at this point is to pull that side spring out first to make sure I don't lose it before I take off the other pickup shoe. Uh, in this case, you got a couple ways to pull it out. If you have a little screwdriver, uh, X-Acto knife, something like that, you can go in and grab the spring and pull it out. Or even easier yet, just turn the car over, tap it, and it comes right out. And it, it, it also fits into a little pocket here. And it also contacts this pickup holder and gives us what we call a dual electrical path. So that uh, the pickup shoe itself, with the hook through the pickup holder, if it's not making contact, 100% of the time, this spring is contacting both, so you always have a steady flow of, of current getting to the car. So it's sort of, sort of like a fuel pump in a car, where the the a fuel pump is constantly pumping gas to make sure it gets to the carburetor or fuel injection in your car. So now let's do the other side. Again, push down on it, just kind of pull it forward a little bit. The pickup shoe will come right off like that. Rotate it out of the hook. There's the other one, and again you just tap it the pickup spring right out so we've got the pickup assembly off now so now we've got um, what may be a bit more of a daunting task for someone who has not taken one of these cars apart although it's quite easily quite easily done uh, a bit like riding a bike is once you know how to do it it's it's quite easy so now this motor assembly uh, consists of the in bell here which houses the brush system and includes this what we call a timing bracket right here which holds the in bell and then the two motor magnets right there and then the armature assembly which you can see runs through the car and we're going to actually take this whole assembly out which would include the pinion, the armature, the bushing, uh, the two motor magnets, the timing bracket and the in bell so that's all one sub assembly that's put together that you can snap into the chassis or remove. Now the chassis itself uh, it, it has some give to it so that I've typically found over the years the easiest way to pop this motor assembly out is to just get a little screwdriver such as this and if you there's room if you can see it there's room between the outer edge of the motor magnet and the chassis to where you can slide something in just like that and then what we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're going to pop that out just a little bit. Now how this assembly actually is held in place in the chassis, if you see right there, there's a hole right there and there's a nub on this timing bracket which fits into that. So it's not, it's not very big, so we only need to pop it just enough to get that out and then lift the motor assembly out. So what I'm going to do is at the same time I'm going to slide my screwdriver in behind the motor magnet and then pry the chassis out just a little bit. Same time I'm doing that, I'm going to put my forefinger on the bottom of the car and push up at the same time. The motor assembly will come up out of the car. You can't get it down through the car, it has to come up. So anyhow, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to put the screwdriver in while I'm pressing below with my forefinger and then I go out just a little bit, just enough to get the little pop. Now, that tab is now out of the hole, so I've got one side popped. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the car over and I'm going to do the other side. And this will kind of give you the view of where the forefinger was before. This time I'm going to use my thumb, and this time I'm going to press down on it. So I'm going to pry the chassis out just a little bit by where the nub is, press out, and the whole assembly comes out right on its own. Very first time, you know, it, it may seem difficult, but you do it three or four times, you've got it licked. It's very, very easy to do. So now the chassis is basically broken down into uh, really almost its most basic form. Now, the next step I'm going to do is to actually take apart this motor assembly. Uh, again, if, you, if you're a beginner at this, or if you're not familiar with working with the G3 car, it may seem a bit overwhelming at first, but again, quite simple. Now, one of the nice things about the design of the G3 car is to basically take this apart. You really only need a little screwdriver and then this little tool here, this is an older version, there's a, a more current version of it, but this is uh, what we call uh, the BSRT G3 in-bell uh, tool and what it does is actually its use is to uh, to actually, <coughs> excuse me, um, move the brushes a bit out of the way so you can remove the, ar remove the armature from the in-bell. 
So now we'll get to that in just a minute. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove the motor magnets from the assembly and they're just basically sitting there. So real simple, they'll just pull right away from the armature. There we go. So I'm going to put those aside for now. So now we're down to just the motor assembly in the in belt and the timing bracket. Now there's a little brush assembly down inside this in belt and, and then uh, through the use of the motor brushes of getting electricity through it and then those motor brushes touch the, the copper commutator that's how the car gets its power that and that's why this is the, the motor in the car and that's why uh, or that's how the car actually functions so now what you want to do is there's actually a couple slots which you can see here in the front of the end bell there's one slot here and one slot over here now what this tool is designed to do is it's drilled out with a big hole in the middle which will fit over this cone here and then these two little pieces right there pieces of spring wire that are on the tool will fit into the hole and then what you want to do is you you, you locate it so you're going to go in at, at basically uh, you know 90 degrees into the in belt and now if you turn it turn it away from you you're actually lifting the brushes away from the armature itself go there like that and just the armature will come right out and now if you take a look in here we'll show you how it actually works now inside there you can see the motor brushes which basically ride on uh, what you could term a leaf spring uh, which then goes to the front of the car which of course then carries electrical path so now what we did with this tool is that uh, those brushes have constant contact against the little copper commutator on the armature. So to pull that armature out, uh, we move the brushes away from the commutator just enough so you could pull the armature out. So now, what I'm going to do now is just show you how that rotates. So if you rotate that, you can see, I'll do it a couple times here, you can see how it actually rotates the brush assembly out of the way the armature. And then, of course, this uh, is also the way you get the armature back into the car as well. So I'll put that tool aside for the, for the moment and then we still have two pieces left here. So you have the in bell which houses the brush assembly and then this piece right here is a timing bracket. Now this actually just pops apart so it's kind of an interference fit uh, as far as the two pieces fit together and then as you can see here this part has been carefully designed and molded in order to actually capture this part and hold it in place. And then, now this is called a timing bracket because one of the features of the G3 car is that it allows you to advance or retard the timing on the armature, which is a nice feature because it's something you can try at the track to get more speed, more torque out of the corners. Uh, generally speaking, we usually, we usually use it in the advanced position which I'll show you when we reassemble the car. Um, but anyway, we've now got the car down to the in bell, the timing bracket. You have your motor assembly here. Uh, you have your various other components here, your magnets, your traction clip, pickup springs, pickup shoes. <coughs> Excuse me, you've now gotten your car down to pretty much its most basic form. So this is, at this point, this is the basic elements of taking the car apart. Um, you can, uh, as far as disassembling some of the other subcomponents, uh, we can uh, 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 do another video on that. But this was the basic breakdown of the G3 car.